Okay, welcome to the second part. Here I'm going to show you how you connect the parts together and how you create the joints such that, uh, for example, this arm here uh, can rotate around uh, this axis here. Uh, if you are interested in the GUI, uh, just go to the third and last part uh, of this uh, tutorial series. So let me start with uh, playing the simulation again. So in the last video, uh, at the end, we have seen that everything is falling apart. So I have the Newton solver um, selected here. So hit play. Okay, it's falling apart. And uh, first, we would like to define our static objects. That would be, in our case, uh, the tower and the base. So let's hit stop. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on this cube here, double click, and then you will see the scene object properties appear. I will leave this window open uh, throughout the whole video. Just place it somewhere that it doesn't uh, it doesn't confuse you. And then down here you see dynamic properties. So hit this show dynamic properties dialog. Also, this one, I, I won't close it, but I'm moving it uh, somewhere uh, over here. And you see, body is responsible, that's, uh, that's fine. That means uh, other objects can collide uh, with the body, that's okay. But we don't want this body to be dynamic, so uncheck this one. Okay, and now simply select uh, the tower, and the same goes for the tower. We don't want this body to be dynamic. Okay, let's see if that works. So hit play, and you see uh, the tower and the base have become static. Let's start by connecting the arm to the tower. So what we really want is that this arm here will rotate around the z-axis of the tower. So if I click here, you see the x-axis, the y-axis, the z-axis will point in this direction, which will be our desired uh, axis of rotation. So just go ahead and right-click, add, now we go to Joint, and for this one, to make this uh, rotation possible, we need a revolute joint. Hit this one, and it's, uh, it's very small, so let me change the size of this. Uh, let's go for 0.3 and diameter 0.6. Okay, let's go ahead and move this a little bit roughly to the correct spot. Let's say we want it somewhere, it doesn't matter, Let, let's, let's place it somewhere here. And if you really want to um, exactly align uh, this uh, revolute joint to the tower, what you can do is you select the object you want to align, and then uh, press shift on your keyboard and select the reference, so our reference is the tower, and then you can go over here to position and it will show you the position of the tower, and you want this revolute joint to have, let's say for simplicity, uh, have the the exact same position. So if I hit here, you'll see it moved it down down here. Of course, since this is the the reference frame. So now it's uh, nicely aligned in X, Y, and Z. So let's only move this along Z somewhere um, somewhere reasonable. Let's say, oops, along Z somewhere here doesn't matter, okay? You could have uh, left this joint here, would work fine. But I like to have the joint uh, where they uh, physically really are, okay? So if you hit play, you will see it's still falling apart since we have not yet specified what is the connection. So let's go over here and first rename this one. Let's say this is our arm. Actuator, actuator. Um, what is it doing? It is connecting the tower. So drag and drop this arm actuator into the tower. It 
connecting the tower with the arm, right? So simply drag and drop the arm in the arm actuator. And that made the connection. See? It's, it's connected. Now to really show you that it's, it's able to, to rotate around this axis, uh, let me select this arm actuator and then you go again in the scene object properties. I mean if you closed it you would double click on this item here then you will see the scene object properties. Here again dynamic properties, show dynamic properties dialog, hit this one, okay, it will be a different one for the joints. And you see this property motor enabled. And of course we would like to have this arm being motor enabled since there will be a motor that makes the arm rotate, okay? Let's say target velocity, um, let's test this with uh, 10 degrees per second. Let me show you what happens if you don't change this maximum torque. So here we got a really big arm and two and a half newton meters, it's not a really high torque. So let's hit play and you see Nothing, nothing happens. What happens if we say, oh, I don't, I want this to have um, 5,000 newton meters. And you'll see the arm will start rotating since it has enough power to, to rotate the, the arm. Let's say minus 10 degrees. Okay, that seems to work. Zero. Okay. It works. Now, um, <coughs> before I move on with the joints, let's look at how we um, attach this counterweight, which is not moving. What you could do is you add uh, a prismatic joint and just give them zero velocity and fix it. But I'm showing you another way how you could simply connect two bodies uh, with each other. We go ahead, add. <coughs> this is a little bit strange, but you can use a force sensor. So let's move this, let me take this down here, let's move this along X and Z, somewhere around here. I mean it doesn't matter where you place the force sensor, as long as you're not interested in the forces, especially in the torques. So let's place this force sensor into the arm and what is attached to the force sensor it's the counterweight let's hit play again you see it's attached to the tower and okay <coughs> okay now our next object right click add joint. This will be a prismatic joint. A prismatic joint allows translations in one axis. This is what we want uh, for the crab, right? So let's go ahead and, and move this along X and Z. Somewhere here. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Uh, da -da -da. Oh, five. It's okay. So now the C axis is pointing up, so it would this prismatic joint would allow a linear movement or um, a movement in the Z axis, but we want the movement to be in the X axis, right? So let's go ahead and rotate this prismatic joint 19 degrees in the Y axis, right? The Y axis is pointing in this direction. So let's rotate it 90 degrees in Y. We'll go over here to um, object item rotation, rotate. We would like to have a rotation. Um, now it's important that you select, you want to rotate it in the own frame. So select own frame and you want to have 90 degrees in Y. Okay, see? That's it. 
now let's uh, align um, let's align this prismatic joint nicely in the z direction such that it has the same coordinate it's not important but it's just for um, it looks a little neater <laughs> so select the prismatic joint hit shift on your keyboard right click now we would like to have a translation again position and here we would like to have the same Z coordinate, right? Okay, that looks looks fine. Let's give this a name. This will be the uh, crab actuator. Come on. Okay. And the crab actuator is sitting on the arm, so let's drag and drop this into the arm and then what is attached to the crab actuator of course it's the crab okay now we select this crab actuator again and you'll see here motor uh, joint dynamic properties so again if you have uh, if you if you don't have this window if you closed it double click here you will see scene object properties show dynamic properties dialog here you go so here motor enabled okay and the same goes uh, for this one so let's say the maximum force is uh, one kilonewton one e3 okay lock motor and target velocity zero that's fine let's test it with uh, one meters per second hit play okay um, it worked but you see it only did uh, a small distance why is that thing is before you add uh, an actuator you should always um, first specify the configuration so it means you know what is the minimum position let's say minimum is zero what is the p position we have drawn the crab? So I like to move this crab. Let's go ahead, mouse translation along X. Let's move it to the start position of the crab. So the crab can't go any further in negative X. Let's say this is our zero position. And we really, before we uh, connect anything, we need to tell them, okay, the position of the object we would like to add is really at zero. If you have something else, you plug in the number. But this is this is easier, okay? And now, what is the range? So now, the range here is one meter, which means this crab is only allowed to go one meter. But we would like to make it more than one meter. So how do we find out this uh, this length? I mean, if you have a, a drawing, you could measure it. But I simply I pick this move it along X and you see on the right there is a plus uh, plus zero 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 which is the translation and you see now we are at 6.5 which is uh, totally fine so our range will be uh, 6.5 let me undo this so let's go ahead go ahead here and say the range is 6.5 now let's hit play again I didn't connect it. <laughs> Arm, crab, okay, start. Uh, now it should stop uh, somewhere around here. Okay, it's, looks looks nice. Okay. Um, ch -ch -ch -ch. Okay, to model uh, the steel cable. You could uh, think, okay, um, why not simply add another um, prismatic joint to the crab that connects the mass to the crab and you're done. You may think uh, you could do it in this way. Let's, let's do it in this way and see what's the problem. Prismatic joint, let's give it the name. Let's say this is our hoist. Later. This one is uh, again 
pretty small, so let's go for 0.5 and 0.05 just for um, simplicity. Now let us align this again with the crap. <laughs> I would like to have this um, at the um, at the end position. Let's move it somewhere here. Okay. Now what is let's say the mass is not supposed to go any any further down. I mean it doesn't matter, but let's uh, suppose this. So what is the way the mass uh, can make? Let's say the mass can go up. Yeah, let's say 5.3. It doesn't matter. I mean, I will just show you how things work. What did we say? 5.3. So let's say the minimum position is minus 5.3. We have drawn the mass to be at the minimum position, so minus 5.3. What is, what is the range? It's 5.3. Okay, so this goes from minus 5.3 to 0. Okay, now we can connect this hoist actuator. And let's make it the wrong way. So we directly um, attach this to the crab and then let's go ahead and take the mass into the hoist actuator. And let's see what happens. You see, I mean, it's connected and it's nicely moving, but we don't have this uh, swimming, swinging behavior. That is because this prismatic joints only allow a movement in this uh, in this direction. Okay, so there is no way that this mass can can swing. Okay, no way. So therefore, we introduced um, this hoist actuator. Uh, this upper guide, I'm sorry. And what we will do is we will connect the hoist actuator to the upper guide. And then we need uh, some connection between do those two such that uh, this uh, rotation is possible. To do this, we like to add joint, and this is the last one, this is a spherical joint. This makes all the motions uh, possible here, and I will not uh, rema rename it, and it will be uh, a helper. We won't use it, it's not actuated. Let's place this between um, the crab and the upper guide, and let's align the spherical joint and the hoist actuator properly with the crab. So, position, tuck, okay nicely aligned. And let's move this spherical joint into the crab and the upper guide into the spherical joint and see again what happens. See, now we have this uh, desired behavior of a swinging mass. Let's have this hoist actuator to be motor enabled. I'm giving it the torque of 6000 6000 Newton. Let's see if it works. One meter per second. Nice. It works and it stops at the uh, expected position. Minus one. Okay. It looks, looks reasonable. Let's remove these velocities and I mean you're done. That's it. That's the linking. And you see, it's very annoying to, uh, to control these uh, speeds. You know, we always have, okay, crap, uh, I don't want this to have zero, but maybe minus one. Oh no, I would like to have it uh, zero. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not very nice. So therefore, you would like to have uh, a speed control where you can easily uh, modify the joint, uh, joint speeds.